Would you like to know the process of the abortations? Yes. When there's a plan, so I can't just choose. I'm not the one that, that decides when and where. I have to ask them, okay, I'm going to be going to the parsonage at so-and-so time on so-and-so day. Uh, on this particular day, can we do an apportation? So they go through um, meditation and they look, however they look at the future and the past and all that, and they see whether or not the vibrations and the energies and stuff are going to be in, a, in the correct alignment for, that, for opening up that possibility. So when they say yes, what happens when that day comes, um, the masters will choose some objects that were either belonging to them or uh, found on earth by someone that's lost them. After 30 days of earth time, if it's not you know, found or um, claimed by somebody, then they're allowed to take it. And you might kind of wonder how they see these objects when they're in the Himalayan mountains and most of the stuff they find is over um, in this area, uh, Europe and uh, Asia and United States and stuff. Time and space exists simultaneously in the past, present, and future. There is no separation between the two. It's like you right now, yes. there's part of you that's having your childhood what? still. Yes. Him and you. Yes. Yeah. And you, everybody. There's, there, and then there's part of you that's in the future. You're already in, the, in, in tomorrow, already doing your thing. And then, but right now, this particular part of your consciousness is here. So this is the only place that you're relating to at this point. It's really confusing. Einstein tried to explain that, but um, he left us with an unfinished formula that we still haven't figured out. That MC equals 2 square, something like that. Um, you probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah, the the brainiac over here. So they put the objects on this makeshift table that has kind of a indentation in it, so they don't fall off the table. And everything is energy in motion, which is also how they see these objects around the world. It's an energy that's illuminating. They put the objects there in, in what what they call the illusion the non-real, meaning what they see to be, what we see to be solid on an object like that carpet right there isn't really what the carpet looks like. It's energy in motion. It's moving. Everything's moving. You are. This is an illusion. Okay? Everything around you is an illusion. It's energy in motion. Now try functioning in your life, especially driving down the road, when not only are you seeing the physical aspect of it, you're also seeing them phasing in and out of energy moving. If you know, some people say you're awful clumsy. You know, be me for 24 hours. So um, I am kind of clumsy. So what Saint Germain does, he separates this part of his body, and in his heart chakra, a silver fluidy energy will come out. And he wills it over to the area where the objects are going to be. What happens is it starts to swirl like this, allowing, let's say, the gemstones to manifest into energy and motion their true form. So then he wills that to, to, to move. And then there's a vortex that's opened up that looks like mercury. And it's, it's spinning at a counterclockwise level. Or, and then they go into the, the, he wills it into the vortex. In school, they teach you that the closest distance between two points is a straight line. In reality is, there is no straight line. It's folded into the same space and time. Okay? Have I lost any of you yet? The Einstein okay. Bridge. Huh? The Einstein Bridge. Yeah. And so when they enter, they come out. Um, the destination, it comes out, origin, destination, comes out, and it will be a gassy energy as it starts hitting the third dimension, which those of you, no matter how close you are to me, won't see that part. 
But the next part, which is almost instantaneous, is that then it turns into a fluid. Now that you might see, okay? Especially if you're close. You might even see the vortex. And the fluid is not saliva. It's, it's a energy from them and, an, and also ectoplasm as it dissipates because when it hits the light, it starts to, to, to dissolve or dissipate. And at, at that point, as they start coming out into the oxygen, into the air, into the atmosphere, into the light, they begin to solidify. Sometimes not all of them make it. And you could swear to God you saw something come through and you're looking on the sheet and it's not there. It's probably because it, it went like that and wasn't able to solidify. And then they hit the sheet and don't touch them right away. You want to wait a couple of seconds or so, maybe 30 seconds, so they can completely get strong. And then that's, that's the process. That's how um, it's created. In a way, if you are, in, any of you doctors of uh, bringing through babies and all that, <coughs> you're a fluid at first. Not a gassy substance, but a, that's later in life. Uh, <laughs> that's a joke. Yeah. Um, you're a fluid, and then you and then you you start to as you come through closer and closer, you start to solidify. So maybe in a way, you guys could be considered an apport too, right? Um, or at least the consciousness in the soul that comes through the spirit 